more than 50 people arrested, 40 guns confiscated. Today, investigators detailed a deadly gang war that spanned from Oakland to Antioch. They uncovered it during the investigation of a homicide last year. For a total of seven shootings, which started Sunday night and carried into late this morning. In the shadow of Los Angeles, where gang culture often takes center stage, there exists a lesser known yet equally menacing chapter of urban violence in Oakland. For nearly two decades, the city has been gripped by a deadly feud between two rival factions, the Case Gang and Stubby Gang. Their violent clash has cast a dark pall over the streets of Oakland, leaving a trail of fear and destruction in its wake. The severity of this ongoing conflict prompted authorities to take unprecedented action. A formidable task force comprising 27 different law enforcement agencies was assembled to quell the bloodshed and bring an end to this brutal war. Join us as we delve deeper into the heart of this grim and unsettling narrative. In 2020, Oakland experienced its most violent year in decades, and unfortunately, 2021 only saw the situation worsen. This surge in violence is closely tied to a relentless gang war that has plagued the city. In this video, we'll delve into the two major gangs at the heart of Oakland's turmoil, the Case Gang and the Stubby Gang. The Stubby Gang, also known as ENT, takes its name from three young individuals. E stands for Edward Hampton, N stands for Nario Jackson, and T for Taliban, a friend who lost his life at the hands of Oakland police. Their story dates back to 2010 when these 17-year-olds were tragically killed in West Oakland. It was around 2011 that the Stubby Gang emerged. But today, none of the original 12 Stubby ANT members remain at large. They are either deceased or incarcerated. The gang has now entered a new era. Unlike their counterparts in San Francisco, Oakland gang members don't limit themselves to a specific block or project. Instead, they can be found throughout the city. However, Stubby Gang members are often associated with neighborhoods like Ghost Town or the 70s, and they can also be located in the murder dubs. Oakland police state that ENT's primary focus has been on committing burglaries, home invasions, and shootings. Particularly, they were known for targeting Asian and East Indian homes with their break-ins. In the present day, ENT is referred to as the Threes and has formed a close affiliation with the Twos, another gang known as the Two-Letter Gang. These groups have essentially merged into one larger entity. The twos predominantly inhabit areas like 88th Avenue, which they dub the Eight, Lockwood, and some apartments in San Leandro. Essentially, the Oakland gang landscape centers around the ongoing feud between the twos and threes, while the fourth represents the Case Gang. For over two decades, a gang originally known as Nutcase has cast a long shadow of terror over the streets of Oakland, dating back to the 1990s. Some believe that the formation of other Oakland gangs in the early 2000s was, in part, a reaction to the menacing presence of the Case Gang. According to the Oakland police, the Case Gang is one of the most frightening criminal entities they've ever encountered, surpassing even the violence associated with the city's notorious crack epidemic. Despite this, the Case Gang managed to establish a reign of terror that struck fear into the hearts of Oakland's residents. The gang's original leader, Leon Wiley, left an indelible mark on this dark chapter of Oakland's history. <laughs> Leon was a real demon, and to prove a point, he laughed as he received his life sentence. In Oakland, the courtroom scene unfolded with a mix of defiance and dark humor as 30-year-old Leon Tuan Wiley received a life sentence from an Alameda County Superior Court judge. Wiley, once a member of the infamous Nutcase gang, couldn't suppress his laughter during the proceedings, even as family members of the victims shared their heartbreaking stories. As Judge Joseph Hurley delivered the stern sentence, Wiley continued to jest, making it abundantly clear that he remained loyal to the gang that had terrorized Oakland in 2003. In a final, audacious act of defiance, he boldly proclaimed, I don't give a F. I'm not scared of none of that. I don't care, I got nowhere to go. I'm Gotti, I'm Tweezy. Nutcases. Wiley was one of eight gang members arrested in early 2003 after a six-week crime spree that rocked Oakland, resulting in five killings of strangers and a series of robberies. Local law enforcement regarded this group, known as the Nutcase Gang, as one of the most notorious little killing groups the city has ever seen. Originally, the Alameda County District Attorney's Office sought the death penalty for Wiley and other Nutcase members, but a change in strategy followed after a jury declined to impose the death penalty on the first gang member. Nonetheless, at least three of the gang members, including Wiley, received life sentences without the possibility of parole for their extensive crimes in 2003. Wiley, who had once led the group, was accused of some of the most heinous acts within the gang's activities. In September, he was found guilty on seven felony counts, including three counts of first-degree murder and an attempted murder, among other felonies. Many of their victims were random individuals. Judge Hurley, as he sentenced Wiley, emphasized that he must remain incarcerated until his death, underscoring Wiley's reckless and casual use of firearms. 
Family members of the victims shared their grief in the courtroom, emphasizing the irreplaceable void left by the loss of their loved ones. The pain, they said, persists daily. Michael Nieto, the deputy district attorney who handled the case, asserted that Wiley deserves to spend the rest of his life in prison, attributing his courtroom outbursts to a deep-seated fear of incarceration. Nieto expressed relief that Wiley received the maximum sentence allowable by law and hoped that this case would serve as a message to city residents that cooperation with law enforcement can lead to the imprisonment of dangerous groups like the Nutcases. This documentary takes a closer look at the chilling saga of the Nutcase gang and the impact of their crimes on the city of Oakland. In a parallel wave of violence, another case member, Deontay Donald, was responsible for four fatalities, while yet another member, Demarcus Rawls, took the lives of four more people. Astonishingly, these violent acts occurred within a mere 10-week time frame. A member of the Case Gang who unleashed a 10-week reign of terror in late 2002 and early 2003 received a significant prison sentence today. Deontay Oink Donald, age 22, was convicted on March 27 of multiple serious charges, including four counts of first-degree murder, along with counts of kidnapping, making criminal threats, and numerous robbery-related offenses. The sentencing, handed down by Alameda County Superior Court Judge Alan Heimer, amounted to 79 years in state prison for Donald, as well as two life terms without the possibility of parole. The two life sentences were a result of special circumstance clauses, indicating that Donald committed murder during a robbery and participated in multiple murders. Then, 30-year-old Amina Nene Dorsey Colbert entered a plea of no contest to second-degree murder. She was involved in the execution-style slaying of Joseph Maybray, her former lover, in the Oakland Hills in 2002. Maybray's killing was allegedly ordered by her husband Gregory Colbert Jr., who was serving time in prison and learned about the affair between his wife and Maybray. Another case gang member, Demarcus Rawls, carried out the shooting, and while Dorsey Colbert didn't commit the murder, she was charged for her role in orchestrating the crime. She was set to be sentenced and is expected to receive a term of 15 years to life in state prison. The case gang's criminal pursuits extended beyond murder. During this period, they were convicted of nine robberies and a staggering 100 muggings. Oakland police even attributed part of their criminal inspiration to the video game Grand Theft Auto 3, suggesting that case members practice their criminal acts in the virtual world before committing them in reality. The older generation of the case gang may have left their mark, but the new generation has inherited their penchant for violence. They are predominantly found in the 90s, an area they refer to as Bossland. However, their presence is not limited to this region, as they can also be found in various parts of East Oakland. These gangs aren't just engaged in street conflicts, they also use their music to broadcast their rivalries. Some of the more prominent case gang rappers include Fredo Bag's Bully, Benji Baby 4, and his more famous track, Blicky, Yodi Benji 4 and the track Rubish, Lil Freezem, and Chai Benji 4. On the other side, more notable stubby gang rappers include Cold Game Spidey, Ace Rico, and Short 200. Detectives say the Warren gangs are responsible for several murders and countless shootings. Let's take a closer look at a series of violent incidents that unfolded in and around the Oakland area, starting in 2020. These events involve various individuals and gang affiliations. It all began on June 25, 2020, when a 19-year-old ENT member named Charles Bolden Jr. was shot on 77th Avenue in Oakland. Two days later, a member of the Case Gang was shot on MacArthur Boulevard. Later that same day, bullets were fired into the home of Case member Donze Young in Antioch, a typically peaceful area. This shooting startled local residents, prompting some to install surveillance cameras. In recent years, many Antioch residents have raised concerns about an increase in violent crime they've never seen before. They attribute some of these issues to the Antioch Section 8 program, which has brought residents from Oakland to their city. Just 13 days later, case member Don Zay Young was shot once again, this time right in front of his Antioch home. Although he survived this shooting, the circumstances were chilling. On August 14, 2020, 18-year-old case member Devon McNeil was fatally shot on Beverly Avenue in Deep East Oakland. The violence continued on August 29, 2020, when Don Zay Young was shot once more, this time in front of his suburban Antioch home. He was pursued on foot, shot multiple times with an AR pistol, and brutally executed, sending a clear message. Antioch police described it as an execution-style killing. A few days later, on September 4th, two ENT members were shot at 56 times with an AR-15. But miraculously, both survived, with one not even being hit. Retaliation followed on September 6th when, during Don Zay Young's memorial in front of the same Antioch home, 13 shots were fired. Fortunately, everyone managed to escape unharmed. However, the violence persisted, as on December 8th, 2020, Danza Young's house was shot at once more, 
indicating that the rival sought further bloodshed from his family. On February 27, 2021, at 10 in the morning, a 21-year-old case member was targeted while pumping gas at an Antioch gas station. Rival gang members began shooting at him, prompting the case members to return fire once they realized the danger. The gas station turned into a war zone during this confrontation. Despite one case member being shot 10 times, he was rushed to the hospital and survived his injuries. Later that day, these case members sought their own revenge by driving to a known ENT location in East Oakland and opening fire on some gang members. Thankfully, no fatalities resulted from these shootings, and Oakland police swiftly responded, detaining the suspects after lengthy foot chases. The firearms used in these shootings matched the shell casings found at the Antioch gas station. It wasn't until March 30, 2021, that arrests were made in connection with these incidents. This documentary will delve deeper into the complexities and repercussions of these violent events. This is the pivotal moment when the fates of the case and ENT gangs took a drastic turn. It's important to note that Antioch, with its distinctive community dynamics, differs significantly from Oakland. The gang members learned this the hard way, as Antioch residents made a determined stand against the violence. They courageously submitted surveillance footage and descriptions of the shooters and drivers, a crucial turning point in dismantling these gangs. Once a sufficient amount of information was gathered from the concerned citizens, both Antioch and Oakland police departments joined forces to tackle the issue. They obtained 100 search warrants from judges to raid the homes of suspected gang members. What they discovered during these operations was astonishing. The recovery of 40 firearms, most of which were linked to the shootings, and hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. A total of 48 gang members were apprehended, marking a significant breakthrough. One key breakthrough came after the killing of Downsay Young on August 29th, when a home surveillance video was submitted to Antioch police, capturing the fleeing driver. Another resident provided a description of the shooter, leading to the revelation that the driver was Charles Bolden and the shooter was none other than his 19-year-old son, Charles Bolden Jr. The subsequent raid on the Bolden household uncovered firearms that matched the shell casings from the shooting of Don Zay Young on July 13th. Police arrested seven people, among them a father and son, 42-year-old Charles Bolden and his 19-year-old son of the same name. During these operations, two relentless ENT members, Eric Windham and Keyshawn McGee, were arrested for their involvement in the Antioch shooting on Aspen Way that occurred on March 9th. Even after these arrests, the areas affiliated with the case and ENT gangs remained plagued by ongoing violence, including homicides. For instance, on July 5th, a 48-year-old man was killed in the heart of ENT territory at 77th and Bancroft. Just two days later at the Men's Memorial, a 49-year-old man was killed in the exact same location. A determined response was launched to bring fugitive gang members to justice. A special fugitive task force was formed with the purpose of apprehending those gang members who had managed to elude capture. Their efforts led to a critical apprehension when they stopped a suspect named Trent Allen, who promptly abandoned his vehicle and embarked on a frantic foot chase, attempting to evade law enforcement. The pursuit unfolded through an office park and residential neighborhood, but ultimately Trent Allen was successfully apprehended. Moreover, the task force managed to locate two other suspects, Terry Ahn and Armoni Pugh, who had taken refuge in a secure hideaway in American Canyon, California. While Terry Ahn made an attempt to escape, he was ultimately captured, and Armoni was taken into custody without any complications. These arrests were in connection with the Aspen Way shooting. Notably, Terry Ahn Pugh was also linked to the gas station shooting that occurred just a few days before he was arrested. The operation, dubbed Windstar, was hailed as a major success as it led to the capture of several high-ranking members from both gangs. In total, 36 individuals were identified and apprehended, facing a range of charges including murder, assault, robbery, and the possession of illegal firearms and narcotics. It became evident that the Stubby Gang had become overconfident, expanding their criminal activities beyond their own city. Engaging in street activities within their own neighborhood may offer some protection as residents may either be bound by the street code or reluctant to cooperate with law enforcement. However, when these activities extend to drive-by shootings in suburban areas, the risk of neighbor involvement in providing crucial information to authorities dramatically increases. This intensive investigation aimed to put an end to the prolonged conflict between the case and stubby gangs, reminding them that they were under surveillance. The tragic loss of many lives in this ongoing feud underscores the urgent need for peace. Unfortunately, it remains uncertain whether the conflict will persist once the heat dies down. As recent reports indicate, Oakland's gang war shows no sign of abating. In fact, it extends beyond these two gangs and involves several factions. 
This is just a fraction of the ongoing turmoil. In the face of this harrowing narrative, it's essential to pause and reflect upon the deeper implications of this urban conflict. The lives impacted, the communities scarred, and the relentless cycle of violence that has plagued these neighborhoods demand our attention and a collective call for change. The tragic events detailed here underscore the urgent need for peace and unity. The toll this ongoing feud has taken on individuals and families is immeasurable. While law enforcement efforts have been instrumental in apprehending those responsible for these crimes, we must also recognize the importance of addressing the root causes of these issues. As we conclude this documentary, we extend a heartfelt plea to the communities affected by these rivalries. We implore all those involved to consider the long-lasting impact of their actions and the potential for a different path forward. It is our hope that, as a society, we can come together to foster environments where violence and conflict are replaced with opportunities for growth, understanding, and healing. People online are sending out their love too. We see comments such as, I hope they all make it through this and it settles with some hood love connection.